Pokemon Sword and Shield is heading everyone's way in just a matter of days between whatever time I finally managed to upload this to all of your sub boxes and the release date. With new evolutions always being a fun topic, and with a new one for our little Zigzagoon pal coming out, as well as the much deserved Farfetch, I thought we should look at the new evolutions Pokemon Sword and Shield will be able to bring to us. And while it may just be new Galarian evolutions rather than normal ones, it'd still be fun to throw our darts at the board of Pokemon that could possibly be evolving into a brand new never before seen Pokemon. So that's what we're doing today, listing 10 new evolutions we could gain in Pokemon Sword and Shield and mentioning every possible counter argument before they're said for why they should be in the games without ever mentioning why they actually should be. That way when someone comments that reason, we can just say I knew you'd say that and send the timestamp without refuting the idea and sit there like we already won the argument. Good, just forcefully win debates together on these new Pokemon evolutions without any reasoning and no conclusive answer as responses. I call it praise or treat. I talked to another person once, I know how this works. I'm not actually doing that by the way. But here we are with the top 10 new evolutions for Pokemon Sword and Shield. Hope you enjoy. Number 10. As this is possibly one of the most requested evolutions, I thought I'd start us off with a popular non-evolved Pokemon to really bring this list to fruition. This Pokemon is not less deserving for an evolution than the other 9 on this list, however I think it'd be a fun starter to begin this video with, and that Pokemon is, <clears throat> just getting ready here, Stunfisk. Well no, actually it's Dunsparce, but Stunfisk too I guess. Dunsparce reigns in as one of the most requested Pokemon to be evolved, and if you flip the 1 and 0 and 10 it's pretty much number 1. Dunsparce is the Generation 2 equivalent of Farfetch, where it's so highly set in stone as one of these Pokemon that's primed up for a new form, but has been left to the side for quite a long time. The most common evolution desire has to be the normal Dragon typing, where we were hoping for it to be the first of its kind, but now we really need it to just outdo Drampa at this point. And with it being able to learn Dragon Rush, it is a possibility. I would also be okay with it being normal ground, or even normal flying with the array of moves it learns but I would really like it to at least keep its signature normal typing we've all known Dunsparce for. The ground typing would be more fitting for a stylistic change into a Galarian evolution, where although the half banana half sonic popsicle color scheme is the iconic look I'd like it to keep, a more rugged, typical brown color most ground types have would fit the land snake description and ability to constantly burrow in a more Galar form. Whereas the dragon and flying additions will allow Dunsparce to grow its tiny little wings and be allowed to fly away in fear as well as being able to dig away with its tail. Dunsparce remains as a super popular requested Pokemon to be evolved, and although I like it to be the exception to return regular evolutions, I think we're all willing to settle for even just a Galarian evolution at this point. Number 9. Durant While I do think Generation 5 is the least likely region to get new evolutions and forms, as it is the Dark Horse region where every Pokemon is left to fend for itself, besides Audino for some reason, that doesn't take away from the fact that there are many well-designed standalone Pokemon that could benefit from a nice evolution to ball more completion and gain a higher overall score. Duran falls into that category as there's some bounce in its step as you can see its design looks pretty prepped for an evolution that would be quite easy to score with the fans. It's already looking like a more middle stage and well-rounded Pokemon that could be easily added onto, leading it to jump to new heights with an even bulkier, thicker evolution. I think it'd be a real slam dunk if they evolved into a stronger steel bug or even add some heat to make it a fire steel. And while that might be very fitting to create an amazing new Fire Ant Pokemon, the bid could fall short and he'd have to stay as the Silver Warrior he is. As I said, I think it's a good middle stage looking Pokemon, so if they were to make a 3 point Pokemon evolution line, it should have a pre-evolution and an evolution, whereas pre-evolution could be a solo type bug Pokemon before it gains its steel typing, and then evolving again into the fire steel type I mentioned before to really spice up the evolution line for each achievement it nets. With the new final evolution of Durant being named MVP, and its possible pre-evolution having the name Kevin. Number 8. Firo. There's nothing quite like adding classic Gen 1 Pokemon to a list of possible new additions in an upcoming game to really just aim for the biggest target you can find, like flying over an ocean trying to pour a bucket of water into it, yet somehow I'm still going to hit a small undiscovered island and miss. Or like another empty bucket just floating in the ocean alone catching every drip I pour. Firo is one of the most deserving classic bird Pokemon from the first generation that could use an evolution. After Surfetch being out, Firo is left as the remaining bird Pokemon to need an evolution since it's been squabbling in competition with Pidgeot since the beginning. And with Pidgeot getting a Mega Evolution, it's really left as a pretty good looking Pokemon that could definitely have more added to it. Maybe a more illuminating legendary look as you could have that simple Gen 1 design that could even just add some spikes or pokey things shooting out of its feathers and honestly it wouldn't look that bad. With the distant cousin twice removed Holo look, there's a lot to be done with this bird. So a full Galarian transition to Firo, like Zigzagoon, would be a pretty decent addition to have it compete at the same level as its starting route bird competitor. I know this leaves Dojo as the last common bird Pokemon, 
but Dojo at least has a sort of signature tri-attack further up in the Pokedex, away from the two, to give it a memorable gimmick to add to its repertoire of uniqueness and separation from the rest. And like, what are you gonna do with this guy? Add two more heads? Then after that, what happens? Three more magnets? Seven more diglets? Twelve eggs, but in a carton? If you want to add something to Dojo, just add a baby bird to Doduo and be done. They're gonna evolve Dojo instead of Fear and other that made this, aren't they? Number 7. Hariyama Here's a Pokemon that we don't hear too much about. With the shorter Super Wrestling version of Snorlax never really being talked about, I thought it'd be a pretty fun underrated Pokemon to be evolved. It could definitely turn into a tankier powerhouse with a few additional add-ons to its stats. Maybe a Galarian Dark Fighting type with a more Team Yell UK Rascal look could really bring some more personality to Hariyama in a different way. Although with Zigzagoon transitioning to the dark side, it might be less likely for another Gen 3 Pokemon to sift right through it. Even a possible Grass Fighting type edition where he becomes some sort of Jack football player and learns a bunch of kicking moves, Hariyama is just a Pokemon I see to be underlooked and pretty underappreciated for its unique design. And with the rumor of a Machamp Gigantamax form, which I'm guessing might be one of those multi-coordinated multi-arm Pokemon versions where the two hands are together over Machamp's head, but now he has like six, kind of resembling this one Yu-Gi-Oh effect card that I can't remember. Someone has to know what I'm talking about, please link me it if you know. I'm gonna be thinking about this for the rest of the day. Hariyama could definitely match a new form of champ in Sword and Shield and be in a competitive popularity boxing match between these two fighters if it was just given a little extra design adjustments. Hariyama is quite underlooked, but a possible powerhouse in the making. Number 6. Turtonator With a name like that, you can't just leave this Pokemon to rest. Turtonator stands out as the first common fire dragon, as it's not a legendary or a mega evolution, and kinda just there harboring one of the most requested dual typings and, well, just not bring 100% to the table here. Turtonator is up there with the addition of standalone dragons that just kinda sit there, bringing the average powerhouse status of dragon types a little bit down. You've got Drudagon and Drampa in addition to Turtonator as decent type additions, but not living up to the hype like Dragonite, Haxorus, Salamence, or Hydreigon bring to the roster. I think we'd all want a more tough design with that sort of Volcarona pretty much legendary status feel to be added onto Turtonator, and possibly giving it more of a dragon look to its already well-rounded turtle identity. With a chemically unstable shell on its back becoming explosive, there's a lot we could really gain if we twerk certain parts in a new form for this guy. It could be like Explode's back but with fires animate out of it on occasion, and less trypophobia. Number 5. Arbok I've always thought Arbok could take on a new evolution to fully assert its King Cobra dominance. With Weezing getting a Galarian form, I think a regular evolution could be a nice counterpart to the Galarian Weezing. While it might be a little off to have a 3-stage Pokemon comboed with a 2-stage Pokemon with how well known these two are with one another, I've always thought Weezing has been complete in its evolution look, aside from its stats, whereas Arbok could be worked on a little bit more. It does feel like more of a Mega Evolution situation for Arbok, or a new half form, but the possibility of an evolution for Arbok could bring an evolution to only the Galarian version of Weezing as well, maybe just a flying nuclear power plant. Arbok definitely has a sought-after Poison Dragon evolution coming for it, as that would just be the most perfect combination. I was hoping it would be the first Poison Dragon, however I don't mind Naganadel after Ash's battles. The best names I can think of for a Dragon Poisoned Arbok would be Repiv or Ekinston, and while you might think that Snake spelled backwards, it's not Snake. Number 4. Charizard See now, I'm sure you're all thinking, hey, but he already has three old stages, and two Mega Evolutions, and a Gigantamax form. And sure, yeah, but what we could have is even more. Our pal Charizard could evolve even its backstory. What we're looking for is just a town in-game filled with Charizard memorabilia, fan NPCs holding Charizard balloons and signs, and actual Charizards of every form roaming around with someone giving you a side quest to adventure off into the full background behind Charizard's life story, with 800 pages of in-game text about Charizard and Charizard's desires. Like how maybe he wants Game Freaks to stop bothering him and spread some love to his fellow starter Pokemon that aren't as privileged as him. Just Gen 1 stars though, Charizard's from an early age where he just thinks about the people around his area. There are so many more things that could be evolved in Charizard, and Game Freak is really just missing out. Charizard theme park anyone? Number 3. Sudowoodo Since Pokemon Sword and Shield has gotten so much positive feedback on how they designed their trees, let's take the little tree that could and make it evolve into something bigger. Maybe this tree exactly. Ideally, I would have gone for Sudowoodo to just turn into Trevenant with some type changes, but then we wouldn't have gotten Phantup and really... Well, actually, I don't know, that's really just a Flying Bonsly, so I'm not even sure if I'm completely sold on that. The most unique type combination I could think of for a Sudowoodo evolution would be a Rock Ghost type to match its tree cousin in Trevenant and the spirits dying of the people who already sat on not buying the games as they saw this one tree in Pokemon, Sword and Shield. Or possibly Fire Rock as they were ignited when they realized they had something to write about. 
The standard best typing to go for would be Grass Rock, as there's only two Pokemon with that type combination, but that would definitely fit the overall look of what a Sudowoodo could be evolving into. Number 2. Gogoat Gogoat has to be one of my favorite pure grass types. I mean, there's not that many, but with them adding like five new ones from Sun and Moon, it went up in my tier list by, well, five, because Gogoat was already at the top, and you can't really go lower than the five more they added in Sun and Moon. Really, this is just a Pokemon I'd like to see go full evolution, even if it stayed as a pure grass type, since I see it having a lot of potential to be upgraded as a top respected Pokemon. Its design is just there, and the almost cost of being legendary. It would be great if it had a really tricky to figure out method like you had to take down 5 Galarian Weezings to purify nature and evolve it into its fully fledged grass form. A difficult evolution method would be really fun since we could start the hashtag hashtag Google the Goat since methods like Inkei's evolution into Malamar are pretty difficult to figure out if you don't know how to do it prior. But that's a topic for another upcoming video. That'll be on the channel soon. Google really fits the atmosphere of the UK, even though I have no idea how many goats are there. By getting to see Skiddos and Gogoats run around in all the space and the fields of the Pokemon Sword and Shield gameplay that's been revealed will be very fitting for the atmosphere, and just being able to see an even bigger version of Gogoat would be a dream come true. Number 1. Us. As people. Maybe what Sword and Shield is really about is us learning to evolve ourselves. Us looking on the inside and reflecting on our ideas, even though others may base their arguments on only what they kinda maybe sorta feel just sometimes. While holding on to those not as well thought out thoughts, and won't budge regardless of any actually fleshed out rebuttals due to the internal shame they'll forever go unadmitted to themselves from the idea of having to admit any wrongdoings, not just denying the deserved criticism, but thinking it's always from an incorrect viewpoint and going, that's not me, I don't do that, instead of adapting positively as they skim over our six sentence message replied to them outlined and summarized as well as it could be as they continue to type in their instinctive unable to notice defensive stance of their previously poorly defined point. While just an audience, a sea of people, 1v1 each other in a battle of likes and dislikes with hashtags flying everywhere as this person begins to picture every so-called relatable conversation to skewed black and white PowerPoint memory slideshow produced in significantly less time than it took for any people to ever begin talking where they just so happen to be, or really just feel, correct 100% of the time. Never noticing it's only from their point of view that they can really only process about 12 unique possibilities, if even that, while well, only the ones that they pick in a knee-jerk response are correct. Which also always seems to be the case that they just so happen to conclude these same reasons every time in those few seconds of analysis. And now this self-proclaimed human nature expert is now filled with pride of limiting it to only four practicalities they could ever encounter. Deriving judgment and deducing they're the only correct ones there after their fairly obvious flowchart of reflection based off a Miriam Briggs personality test that they looked over once because it had such a high chance of being correct with a 45% success rate on the bottom of the website itself that now leads to the completely not one dimensional deliberation that they're just so ahead of their time. And why does everyone just think like them with such personality and inclusiveness as we all meld together in their further deluded reasoning of never admitting any wrongdoings because they definitely never actually happened. But not me though, I don't do that. And that's where we all evolve, together. Whether you're for or against Sword and Shield, or you're like me and you don't own the Switch, maybe we should all just intake more experience, shared from information, and try to see eye to eye from the countless possibilities of possible thoughts that someone could possibly be thinking that aren't defined in the five-step body language wiki how that this one person didn't even fully read. Maybe we could all turn a new leaf and reach this next stage together. Maybe we should be the ones evolving. Or Venomoth, I guess. Just had Psychic to replace either of its types like they should have done to Butterfree's flying. Venomoth's number one. Thanks for watching. Or listening. I don't know which right now. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And the question of the day is, how you doing? Thanks for being here and supporting me as always. We'll be getting some more videos. As I said, there is an upcoming video that I mentioned in this video, as well as a few other ones that I'm working on. Anyways, thanks for tuning in and until next time, see you all then.